A journey through time. Presidents and Vice Presidents of the Philippines. Welcome to our historical overview of the Presidents and Vice Presidents of the Philippines. Let's take a journey through time and explore the leaders who have shaped the nation. From the fight for independence to navigating the complexities of a globalized world, the Philippines have seen its share of triumphs and challenges, and at the helm of this nation have been men and women thrust into extraordinary circumstances, tasked with leading the country and its people. In this series, we'll delve into the lives and legacies of these presidents and vice presidents, examining their policies, their impact, and the indelible mark they've left on the Philippines. Emilio Aguinaldo, the dawn of a nation. Our journey begins with Emilio Aguinaldo, a name synonymous with Philippine independence. A revolutionary leader during a time of immense upheaval, Aguinaldo's courage and determination ignited the flames of freedom against Spanish colonial rule. We'll explore my rise to prominence, the declaration of independence in 1898, and the establishment of the first Philippine Republic. But the path to nationhood was fraught with obstacles. Aguinaldo faced internal conflicts and the looming presence of another colonial power, the United States. We'll examine the Philippine-American War, a contentious period in the nation's history, and the eventual capture of Aguinaldo, marking the end of an era. Manuel L. Quezon, architect of a nation. Manuel L. Quezon, often hailed as the father of the Philippine Commonwealth, takes center stage in this chapter. A staunch advocate for independence, Quezon skillfully navigated the political landscape during the period of American administration. We'll delve into his efforts to establish a national language, his vision for a self-governing Philippines, and his legacy as a nation builder. Quezon's presidency, however, was tragically cut short by the outbreak of World War II. As Japanese forces occupied the Philippines, Quezon was forced into exile, leading a government in exile will explore his unwavering commitment to his people even in the face of adversity and his enduring impact on the Philippine identity. Sergio Osmena, leading through transition. The weight of a nation in transition fell upon the shoulders of Sergio Osmena, who assumed the presidency following Quezon's death in 1944. With the Philippines still grappling with the aftermath of World War II, Osmina faced the daunting task of rebuilding a nation ravaged by conflict. We'll explore his efforts to restore normalcy, provide relief to a devastated populace, and lay the groundwork for the Philippines' return to self-governance. Osmina's presidency, though brief, marked a pivotal moment in Philippine history. We'll examine the challenges he faced, the difficult decisions he made, and his contributions to the nation's journey towards healing and recovery. Chapter 4. Manuel Roxas, the Third Republic and Post-War Realities. Manuel Roxas emerged as a key figure in the post-war era, becoming the first president of the newly established Third Republic of the Philippines in 1946. Tasked with guiding the nation through the complexities of independence after decades of colonial rule, Roxas faced immense challenges. We'll examine his efforts to rebuild the nation's infrastructure, revive the economy, and address the social and political divisions that lingered after years of conflict. Roxas's presidency, though marked by progress, was not without its critics. We'll delve into the controversies surrounding his administration, including accusations of corruption and his close ties with the United States. Despite these challenges, Roxas's legacy remains intertwined with the Philippines' first steps as an independent nation grappling with the realities of a post-war world. Chapter 5, Elpidio Quirino, Economic Policies and National Reconstruction. Elpidio Quirino, who assumed the presidency following Roxas's untimely death in 1948, inherited a nation still grappling with the scars of war and the challenges of independence. Quirino prioritized economic recovery, implementing policies aimed at stimulating growth and addressing the needs of a struggling population. We'll explore his efforts to attract foreign investment, promote industrialization, and improve the lives of ordinary Filipinos. Quirino's presidency also saw the continuation of the Hukbalahap Rebellion, a communist insurgency that posed a significant threat to national security. We'll examine his government's response to the insurgency and the complex social and economic factors that fueled the unrest. 
Chapter 6, Ramon Magsaysay, the People's Champion. Ramon Magsaysay, often dubbed the Champion of the Masses, swept into office in 1953 on a wave of popular support. Known for his charisma, his common touch, and his unwavering commitment to social justice, Magsaysay captured the hearts and minds of the Filipino people. We'll explore his focus on rural development, his efforts to combat corruption, and his successful campaign to quell the Hukbalahap rebellion, bringing a measure of peace and stability to the nation. Magsaysay's presidency, though tragically cut short by a plane crash in 1957, left an indelible mark on the Philippines. His emphasis on serving the common man, his dedication to integrity in government, and his genuine connection with the people cemented his legacy as one of the country's most beloved leaders. Chapter 7, Carlos P. Garcia, Filipino First and Economic Nationalism. Carlos P. Garcia, who assumed the presidency following Magsaysay's death, continued his predecessor's legacy while also forging his own path. Garcia championed economic nationalism, advocating for policies that prioritized Filipino interests and reduced dependence on foreign powers. His Filipino First policy sought to empower local businesses promote Filipino entrepreneurship and assert the nation's economic independence. Garcia's presidency coincided with the Cold War and the Philippines found itself caught between the competing ideologies of the United States and the Soviet Union. We'll examine Garcia's foreign policy, his efforts to maintain close ties with the United States while also navigating the complexities of a bipolar world. Chapter 8 Diosdado Macapagal, Land Reform and a Shift in National Identity. Diosdado Macapagal, elected president in 1961, focused on addressing long-standing social and economic inequalities that plagued the Philippines. His most ambitious initiative, the Agricultural Land Reform Code, aimed to break up large land holdings and redistribute land to tenant farmers, a move aimed at empowering the rural poor and fostering a more equitable society. Macapagal also made a symbolic yet significant change to the Philippine calendar, shifting Independence Day from July 4th, the anniversary of independence from the United States, to June 12th, the date of the Declaration of Independence from Spain in 1898. This move reflected a growing sense of national identity and a desire to forge a path distinct from its colonial past. Chapter 9 Ferdinand Marcos, From Promise to Dictatorship. Ferdinand Marcos, elected president in 1965, promised a new society for the Philippines. Initially, his presidency was marked by infrastructure development and economic growth. However, Marcos's rule took a dark turn as he consolidated power, cracked down on dissent and declared martial law in 1972, ushering in an era of authoritarian rule that would last for over a decade. The Marcos regime, though marked by economic progress in its early years, was marred by widespread corruption, human rights abuses, and the suppression of democratic freedoms. We'll delve into the complexities of this tumultuous period, exploring the factors that led to Marcos's rise, the excesses of his regime, and the growing resistance that ultimately led to his downfall. Corazon Aquino a housewife thrust into the political spotlight following the assassination of my husband, Senator Benigno Aquino Jr., became a symbol of hope and resistance against the Marcos dictatorship. Her ascension to the presidency in 1986 following the People Power Revolution marked a pivotal moment in Philippine history, ushering in a new era of democracy after years of authoritarian rule. Aquino's presidency was focused on rebuilding democratic institutions, restoring civil liberties, and healing the wounds of the past. We'll explore my efforts to draft a new constitution, my commitment to human rights, and the challenges I faced in consolidating democracy in a nation still grappling with the legacy of Marcos's rule. Fidel V. Ramos, a former military general who played a pivotal role in the People Power Revolution, assumed the presidency in 1992. Ramos, known for his technocratic approach to governance, prioritized economic liberalization, opening up the Philippine economy to foreign investment and pursuing policies aimed at fostering growth and development. Ramos also made significant strides in peacebuilding, 
engaging in peace talks with various rebel groups, including the Moro National Liberation Front and the Communist Party of the Philippines. We'll explore his efforts to address long-standing grievances, negotiate peace agreements, and bring an end to decades of armed conflict. Joseph Estrada, a popular film actor who campaigned on a pro-poor platform, was elected president in 1998. Estrada's presidency, however, was short-lived, marked by allegations of corruption and cronyism that led to his impeachment in 2000. We'll explore the controversies that plagued his administration, the public outcry that followed, and the dramatic events that led to his removal from office. Estrada's presidency, though brief, highlighted the fragility of democratic institutions and the importance of accountability and transparency in government. His impeachment trial captivated the nation, sparking debates about corruption, governance and the rule of law. Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, who served as Estrada's vice president, assumed the presidency in 2001 following his ouster. Arroyo's presidency was marked by a period of economic growth, fueled by her administration's focus on fiscal reforms and attracting foreign investment. The Philippines experienced a period of relative economic stability and progress during her tenure. However, Arroyo's presidency was also plagued by allegations of corruption, electoral fraud and human rights abuses. We'll delve into the controversies that surrounded her administration, the political turmoil that ensued and the challenges she faced in maintaining stability amidst growing opposition. Chapter 14. Benigno Aquino III Continuing the fight against corruption, Benigno Aquino III, the son of Corazon Aquino and a senator at the time, rode a wave of public sentiment following his mother's death to a landslide victory in the 2010 presidential elections. Aquino's presidency was defined by his commitment to his mother's legacy of democracy and good governance. He made combating corruption a cornerstone of his administration, pursuing high-profile cases against corrupt officials and implementing transparency and accountability measures. Aquino's economic policies, focused on fiscal discipline and attracting foreign investment, contributed to continued economic growth. We'll examine his administration's efforts to address poverty, improve education and healthcare, and position the Philippines as a rising economic power in Southeast Asia. Chapter 15, Rodrigo Duterte, the controversial strongman. Rodrigo Duterte, the longtime mayor of Davao City, rose to prominence for his tough on crime approach and his promises to eradicate drugs and criminality. Elected president in 2016, Duterte launched a controversial war on drugs that resulted in thousands of deaths, drawing international condemnation and accusations of human rights abuses. My mission is to rid this country of drugs and criminality, no matter the cost. Duterte's presidency was marked by his populist rhetoric, his authoritarian tendencies, and his pivot away from the United States, traditionally a close ally, towards closer ties with China and Russia. We'll delve into the complexities of his presidency, examining his domestic and foreign policies and their impact on the Philippines. Chapter 16, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. The return and the challenges ahead. Ferdinand Marcos Jr., the son of the late dictator Ferdinand Marcos Sr., won a landslide victory in the 2022 presidential elections, marking the return of the Marcos family to power after more than three decades. Marcos Jr. campaigned on a platform of unity and a promise to restore the nation to its former glory. His presidency, however, faces numerous challenges, including addressing the COVID-19 pandemic's lingering effects, tackling poverty and inequality, and navigating the complex geopolitical landscape. We'll examine the early days of his administration, the promises he's made, and the challenges he faces in leading the Philippines into the future. Legacy and the Future, the continuing story of the Philippines. Thank you for joining us on this historical journey through the leadership of the Philippines. From the fight for independence to the challenges of the 21st century, the Philippines has navigated a complex and often turbulent path. The leaders we've explored, each with their own strengths and weaknesses, their triumphs and failures, have all shaped the nation's destiny. Stay tuned for more insightful content on our channel as we continue to explore the rich tapestry of history and its impact on our world today.